Welcome back, everybody. Enter progress. So I'm just gonna go and start it running. The party bagel. I'm gonna pop my stuff out. And I'm gonna tell you guys, for a very, very long time, I was in denial. I was in denial, and it wasn't until I read my chart that I was like, okay, well. Maybe I do have a little bit of PTSD. You know, you guys broke my head. What do you guys expect? You know? And at first, I didn't understand why I got the PTSD. And like, okay, I get it. I got injured. And let's be real. You know, these are just going to be challenges for the rest of our lives. Anybody that gets a head fracture, you have challenges for the rest of your life. So, me being Brisa, I have always been overthinking since that injury, like, what the fuck happens now? What happens now? Like, I can't run, I can't compete in anything, I can't go boxing. What happens now? PTSD, to many people, always is military first. Yes. But there's different types of people. PTSD. There's also sexual PTSD, you know, and same thing, different thing though. It's the same, but it isn't, you know, because it's different ways to approach it, different ways to help people with it. So while I was in denial of having PTSD, I was having a difficult time getting a hold of my health. I was sick, I had a stomach bacteria, I had leaky gut, toxins were just running all over my body, and I thought that I was dying. I was poisoning myself. For months, I had to juice and eat very, very bland food, survive on that, because my body wasn't taking anything. And that, my friends, gave me PTSD as well. I became so sick and my body shook so bad from this fucking illness that I got PTSD. I have PTSD from the hip injury, so if there's a commotion in the house, I freak out. I get in a bad mood and everybody has a real horrible day. If I start getting sick, um, if my ears hurt, have tinnitus it's always fucking happening if my ears begin to hurt I start to freak out because then the migraines come in and then the flare and then I get nausea and then I can't eat and then I lose weight and then I'm back in the hospital and then all these problems happen I start dehydrating and I can't get constipated and then I can't do anything and the bed rest right I become scared when I get sick I get scared when I go for a walk and my knee starts to hurt or my hip starts to hurt or my back starts to get stiff. I panic. I try not to. I do my best not to. Okay, just as far as we can go, we're going to go back right now. We're not going to push it. We're going to go back. Subconsciously, I'm losing my shit. Subconsciously, way, way in the pit of my brain, I am losing my shit. Because if this is an injury, everything's just going to bust to shit. I'm just going to start composing again, and I'm going to mess up the other side, or I'm going to have a new injury, and it's going to be another couple months of therapy that I already don't get. You know, like, there's no need. There's no need. But my body, my brain start to get hurt. I can just be having allergies. And I freak the fuck out and I start doing all these fucking remedies to get rid of just, you know, a brain tumor that might start happening because I have earache or I have a headache. Because the last time I got sick, I almost, I almost let it pass and that thing could have turned into stomach cancer. So, I pay attention to my body a lot, a lot. And it's not a bad thing, but... It comes to a point that sometimes you're just thinking about it too much. You know, you fuck yourself up. 
meaning with PTSD sucks. You don't have control of your body. You don't have control of your thoughts. And it sucks. Because sometimes you just want to have a good day. You just want to get up and walk your dogs. You want to get up and, you know, go with the family. Go out to a hike. Go out for a walk in the park. But your body gives you your limitations for the day or for the morning or for the hours. And then you're done. And you can do shit. Your PTSD comes in. If I already made plans last night, that today in the morning I'm going to go for a hike. And my knee decides to start fucking hurting, start flaring, I lose my shit. I lose my shit. I prepared for this day and everything was great. And now my fucking knee is hurting. I can't just have a good day. And then, well, everybody else has a rough day because my knee hurts and I can't do a lot and I have to walk now and it hurts. And it wouldn't have hurt because the universe likes to take punishment sometimes to stay home. <laughs> you know? Mental illness, everybody, mental illness. There will be times that my boyfriend is mean to me. <laughs> Not consciously, not on purpose, you know, just being honest and being blunt. And he pokes holes on my stuff sometimes. Like, sometimes he just asks too many fucking questions about a project, and I'm just like, fucking forget it, dude. Fucking forget it. You have a million fucking questions. Just fucking forget it. Can't with you. <laughs> or it's the child. Sometimes it's the child. Sometimes it's the dog. It's the dog like to piss in the house. They like to chew shit up. You're not supposed to. And I lose my shit. I start yelling at them. I don't fuck would you do that you think shit's free here what the fuck is wrong with you why the fuck aren't you in up yet you know it's fucking 11 in the morning and you're still not up you still haven't done your chores you haven't taken the dog out my PTSD comes in I start going on survival mode I start cleaning the fucking house I try to do everything myself and it backfires because I'm coming back from injuries I can't carry the world on my shoulders but something always triggers me, and I feel like I have the world on my shoulders. They can't do the job. I have to do it. And it becomes so heavy, so relentlessly heavy to be in this fucking train. And I call it a train because I started doing yoga. I started meditating. I started praying every morning. Every morning, I would get up and do this. Every day for months, right? I did it for maybe four or five months. And I'm trying to get back into it again. It was so wonderful. Things started happening. I started getting memories back. I started getting visions. A lot of emotions started surfacing. And I wasn't really sure how to take care of it, how to express it, how to relieve it, how to let it out of my body. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I didn't know what was going on. I knew that my body was having a hard time with something, and that was it. I was becoming very emotional. Um, certain songs would make me cry. I would cry. And I didn't I didn't understand that, you know, PTSD does this shit. It does this. Um, there'll be times that I come up with a good idea, and I was like, oh, I'm going to use this. In the beginning, I'm going to use this for the podcast. And then I just, I would criticize the shit out of myself that I put myself down and then I would just delete it. I just criticized my work so much because I wanted it to be so perfect because I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that, you know, you're still missing this, you're still missing this. Motherfucker, there's a bunch of shit missing. Mental health, there's so many gaps in there. But I was trying to be a perfectionist. I was self-sabotaging myself by going over and over and over the notes. Like, you don't need to go over the notes, bitch. You have the experience to explain to people what the fuck PTSD is. PTSD is when you flip the switch on your shit and you lose your shit. PTSD is when you have a traumatic experience that just fucks with your emotional and physiological and your mental health. Fucks you up. 
as I started doing the yoga, I was able to start, you know, letting go of that anger. You know, you guys fucking broke me. Now I'm fucked for life. Whatever. Let's see how I can help my body. Start doing the praying, the yoga, the meditation. And I started seeing a white door. And I hated it because I saw this white door and it threw me back to the time I had done the psychedelics. And in the psychedelics, I saw the white door and there was like a girl there and she threw the fucking door at my face, right? And I was angry. Um, when I started doing the meditation, I saw the white door and it took a long time, but I was able to open the door and I saw me. I saw me as a little girl there. And she was angry. She was very angry. She was upset. And I didn't get it. I started talking to a therapist. And she told me, if you have some kind of childhood trauma, this is your body telling you and letting you know that it's time to heal that part. A big part of me knew I had trauma. A big part of me knew there was something that disgustingly happened to me. But my brain was, for some reason, just block it off. I just, I wouldn't remember it. The times I did remember it are these feelings of just confusion, confusion of anger, resentment, of just sadness. This horrible, horrible sadness would come over me, and I was just a mess. I was a mess. As I kept practicing meditation and praying and eating healthy, um, I started releasing hormones in the body. I was feeling things shift in the body. I started feeling like I was fighting myself, that there was two of me that I was fighting in my brain, and I, was, I didn't get it. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> it's my brain. As I started paying more attention to this white door, I was like, fuck, I've seen this door before. And with practice, I was able to open the door. I see the girl. And over time, you know, I started kind of hanging out with this girl. Just hanging out with her. She was in there at me. What's going on? And it's a lot of mental work. It was a lot, of, a lot of crying. A lot of crying. This little girl was so angry. And she was so crying. Used and she was so angry and betrayed in this restroom with the white door. That little girl was abused by her brother. He made her do all the sex. She was just a And you are supposed to be her brother. Piece of shit. And that came to me, and I was a disgusting mess. I hated him. I hated him for hurting me. I would daydream of killing him. I would daydream on not honestly just fucking getting him drunk, inviting him over, you know, hang out with the family. They miss you, get him drunk, knock him out, or kill him. People don't need this. The world does not need people like him. But I knew I was wrong. I'm no one to take a life from anybody. I'm no one to judge him. But I was angry. My little girl was angry. So this whole learning the polyvagal theory, learning more about mental health, learning about how the brain works, how the body holds on to emotion, learning yoga, you're learning Ayurveda. I had to heal from this. I had to heal from this and it took a long time. I couldn't talk about it. I was angry. I was embarrassed. I was ashamed. You know, like Nobody talks about trauma like this. Not openly, not happy. And if they do, 
they heal. You know, it's it's the best part and it's the worst part for us that go through this because we go so much so instantly. But as we go, the heavy burdens of that just fell out onto us and put us down. So what do we do? What do we do to help this PTSD? How do we help that inner child? How do we heal from a traumatic event like this? We begin by talking, writing. What is hurting you? What are you feeling? Why do you feel so sick? Why do you feel so tired? Why do you feel so lonely? A lot of these are answers that we can find within The only thing is going within is so much work and it hurts so much, it hurts so much. But it's such a weight off your shoulders to be able to come back from that and be like, okay, I was abused. I didn't have a choice. I couldn't defend myself. I was innocent. I was a child and it's bothered me into my adulthood. It's Fuck me up. It's giving me mental illness. It's giving my son mental illness. And now I have a lot of work to do. I have to heal my inner child. I have to heal my physical body. I have to heal my mental thinking. I have to heal myself. While doing that, I'm still trying to help my son heal from the things that he's been through. The shit I made him go through because mentally, been able to succeed because life keeps fucking happening we are in another fucking pandemic apparently we have inflation shit's expensive everyone has mental illness at one point or another everyone or someone you know has it this pandemic did something to us did something to us and a lot of us are still in denial that we have mental illness. A lot of us are in denial that we need the help. So we're here. What emotional neglect could have been so bad that we had to shift in our brain that gave us PTSD or OCD? or ADHD, or major depression. What was it? A lot of times when we shift into a survival mode, our bodies don't recognize that we're safe. I'm home, I'm safe, I'm with my dogs. If for some reason I overthink it that they're barking, if I overthink it that there's a lot of music I lose it. My shit disrupts and I go into the train. I go into this fucking train that you can't get off until you catch yourself. Until you catch yourself. You fall asleep on this train. And this train is just anger, resentment, sadness, and all this fucking negativity that is just drowning you. It's just drowning you. Living with mental illness is such such a struggle. So many people have it. So many people have it. It does not mean it's the end of the world. It just means that shit happened and now we just have to help you. We have to help your inner child and we have to help your physical body. We have to help you heal. PTSD is not reversible. PTSD is not curable, it's treatable, it's manageable. There is hope, there's faith. A lot of us, a lot of us have days that are amazing. We had no pain, we can remember everything, we're on it, we can 
get out like a hike in or a little workout in we're able to make some food call our families we're able to be on top of the world we're able to get ready we're able to get ready look beautiful feel beautiful and shine beautifully and then there's times that we just want to blow our fucking brains out we're just fucking done there's times I just want to go to the mountains and jump off because everything I do isn't enough. For some reason or another, I'm just going to end up in trouble or it's just, I'm going to let people down. And mental illness is a motherfucking serious case, but I'm here to help you guys. Thought patterns can change. Changing thought patterns, you can start changing the algorithms of the thoughts in the brain. You're able to start changing the way your patterns make your emotions feel and get a hang of how your thoughts process things. You'll be able to heal. You'll be able to just be happy. You know, you don't have to be scared. You don't have to feel like you're not safe. You just need to give yourself the permission you need to give yourself the permission to feel everything that's in there, to let it out. Give yourself the permission to be free from these chains. Give yourself the permission to grow. Love yourself. Love yourself. I hope you guys learned something from this episode. I hope you guys get motivated and push yourselves to fight because mental illness is a big thing. It's a scope of the scale in this country. Mental illness has everybody on this train. And this train, you can get off. So stick around and I will give you guys the tools that I use to help grow myself and I'm having my episodes. So hang tight everybody. Nothing's saying.